um, for me personally, like looking back at this year, I I'm still amazed because I remember what January was like and then shifting into February. That was when I was officially starting at just ORU. Like at the end of 2020, I was doing two schools. And then this year I was fully at ORU. And then I started writing my second book and within four months it came out and then more things happen. And so I'm personally just amazed at what God has done, even though it wasn't always easy. There's a, a lot that I have to be thankful for. And I just thought about what you and others might have to say about this year, because we're all going through different different situations, different seasons, and there's a lot we can learn from each other. So for you, what are three lessons maybe or things that stood out to you this year and that probably just changed how you looked at this year, you know? Yeah, 2021 was quite the year, I think. I think it's been quite the year for a lot of people, but looking back at it, I'm really grateful for 2021. I mean, if I would sum up this year, I would say surprising uh, for me personally. And there were both good surprises and not so good surprises. But I think of uh, what I was doing a year ago and looking back and everything that has happened and transpired this year, like same thing with ORU. Like I didn't even have ORU on my radar. And all of a sudden it's like, I'm... I'm taking like online university classes and I started two new jobs and um, God put it on my heart last year. I had certain projects um, that I had dreamed about over the years and he put it on my heart to finish them. So at the beginning of the year, I was working on those and I got like them completed. So that felt good. So, mm -hmm. well, we have someone coming in. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Hi. Hi, good evening to you. Good evening. So um, we're just talking about like things that we learned from 2021. The video is recording and I hopefully will be sharing this as my last video for 2021 and first video for 2022. So. Welcome. <laughs> Kickstarting the year with like all around the world. Got a little bit of Philippines, a little bit of New York, a little bit of Canada. <laughs> Hopefully Stacy will pop in. It's great. I love it. Yeah. How are you doing, Kim? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yes, I'm happy. Yes. Yes. We're counting down the days yeah. to 2022. So I'm happy. Praise God. Yeah, I'm currently in um, the 30th here. You guys are still in the 29th. So we're right. sitting here. Um, but Sarah was just sharing about 2021 and how surprising it was for her. Do you think you can share something about what you've learned this year or what stood out to you um, this year in 2021? Ah, okay, for 2021, it has been a very good year. Um, I think, like, I got saved four years ago, and um, I think most of um, my, the purpose that um, living for God has been fulfilled um, throughout 2020 to 2021. Not saying that I wasn't doing the work back then, but I think now we had to do more. We, we, I wasn't like relaxed or complacent or comfortable because of the pandemic. It pushed us to a different era in teaching, in learning, in studying, in even fasting. When you know you would actually join with your brothers and sisters every Wednesday in church for fasting or Bible study. And Thursday, because I had a routine, and every Thursday at ladies' ministry, and we're on the prayer line and all of these things. And due to the pandemic, we had to stop. Everything changed and went online. So for me, um, 2021, 
it was it was a very good year based on the fact that the persons who like the shepherd that we had instructing us and leading us that they were still rooted they were still grounded that even though there was a different ship something that they were not new they were new to a different era meaning technology evolved some persons were not streaming online but because of the the pandemic they had to go online with zoom with teleconference with google meet so we saw those challenges even the older people who didn't have these applications on their phone so it opened an atmosphere like you know what's going on like everybody's now online and i was just online with a praise cafe and an older lady that went to um oral roberts a couple of years ago she graduated and she met her husband there. She joined for the first time. She's starting school next week. And she's like, I just got internet two days ago. I didn't have internet. So I'm in the 20th century. I'm not even in the 21st yet. <laughs> her name, yeah, and we were laughing because she said, I just got internet two days ago. So because she decided to go back to school and she's going online, she now knows she need internet. So you do have people who still has the flashlight phone that doesn't carry data, <laughs> but because of technology, they had to get data on their phone and upgrade, you know, so they, they, they could come on. So for me, for 2021, it was a blessed year. Um, I have uh, like the Lord reveal a lot of stuff to me that like I had a lot of questions some things I didn't understand in the past, he, um, he revealed it to me. And even with the opportunity, like, I mean, I'm always like doing stuff. And I remember this year, for instance, I, I will always remember this year because I always pay for everything. And I remember my pastor shared a book with us that's called Jabez and the book of Jabez. And I read the book. And when I read the book, it, it tells us that we're supposed to ask for what we want. We're supposed to say, God, this is what I need and just know that God is going to deliver. So I was like, okay, I'm reading this book and this book is telling me what to do. I need to ask this question. So I was like, God, I need a vacation. I need a vacation and hmm. something that I ain't going to pay for. Something that somebody will just call me up and say, Kim, the vacation. And I was like, okay, the book says, bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. So I was like, okay. Bless me, God, indeed. So I remember I read the book and I was like saying it like Monday, Tuesday. And then a friend called me, a church sister called me and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just here reading my Jabez book. And she said, so, okay. So I'm, she's like, How, what about this book? I'm like, well, it's I'm supposed to ask her what I want. And she's like, so what is it that you want? I said, I want a vacation. Okay, so where do you want to go? I said, I want to go to Orlando. How long do you do you want to stay? So I was like, can we not go there? Why all these questions? Okay, we continue talking about something else. And then at the end of the conversation, she's like, how long do you want to stay? I was like, maybe a week to 10 days. And she's like, okay, I'll pay for you and Satif. I was like, what? She said, I'll pay for you and Satif. And she paid Wow. For Sativa and I to go to Orlando, fully paid for everything in July of this year. And at the end, like about a day after, she's like, can I come? I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't lonely. She came, she brought her two sons. And then I brought my sister and my niece. So it was like a big thing. And we went and I've never been to Orlando before. And we went to Volcano Bay, which was a new new um, amusement park. Nice with water slides, everything. And I was like, oh God, we just need, as children of God, need to tell you what we need. And I just went for it and I came back and I testified. And I said, listen, I started testifying before I even leave for Orlando. And I went and I'm telling you, it was not cheap because we had airline tickets, we had a hotel reservation, for a year, for eight days, plus all the, the, the amusement parks. And every day we had something to do, plus rent a car. And I was like, okay, God, you have I've experienced this because I'm always 
the one giving and I'm always like, okay, I will pay for my stuff. But to know that I was reading the book and it, it gave me that confidence to ask God for what I wanted. And I did that and it worked. And I was like, okay, I'm going to live my life that way. And I remember even with Who Are You, when I registered and I was like, okay, my tuition and everything. And I was like, God, you're responsible for this. You are in charge. And I was, I remember I fasted and I prayed and, and I remember the Holy Spirit said, uh, I woke up singing, God will work it out. I was like, okay, God, you got me, you got me, you got me. And when you were praying for me, Rochelle, that was one of my, my requests. And when I looked, everything was approved and my school fee was just fully paid for. And I was like, God, oh, you, so, oh, you love me so much. You love me, you know? <laughs> so I was like, I was so excited. So for 2021, I, I believe it's a blessed year, not just spiritually, but physical blessing as well. And um, I, I met some good friends in that who are you. Um, um, I, I realized that my past had given me even more responsibility to do online. So even though I used to be active in my previous church, I realize I'm active as well online. So it's not like I'm not ladies president anymore because it's a different church, but I still have responsibilities and duties and still evangelizing and still doing Bible meets and still going to studies. So it, it has been a wonderful year. And I think most of all, I've liked like maybe about five times this year, I've experienced having um, meet with my family for prayer meeting and the spirit of God moves because even over Christmas on Saturday, the spirit of God moved. Christmas day, we were praying and the Holy Spirit moved. My niece was crying. My aunt was screaming. There was so many things happening in the atmosphere. And I just have to give God all the glory and all the honor because that's what I want. I want my family to be saved. You know, mm -hmm. I always want them to be saved. And it's just me. And it, it's hard when it's just you because then you don't have that body coming besides my daughter she comes to church with me but I mean like my extended family like my mom my sisters my grandparents I would love for them to that we could bond I mean we can talk about God but really talking about God I want to be able to be like okay I'm not the one who's praying you are praying for me you, you understand so everybody likes that to have somebody that they can call on in the family and be like grandma can you pray I'm not saying my grandmother cannot pray but if I want somebody to pray, I'm not going to call my grandmother because she is not at the place. And I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid to say that. So, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, I just pray for them continuously that the Lord will just change them because he's the one who saves, not mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it has been a very good year and I'm looking forward to 2022 to see all the prophecies prophesy coming through you know a new season a new era and i'm looking forward to see what the lord has in store wow that is so encouraging and it's cool <laughs> because i remember hearing you talking about going to orlando but i didn't know the backstory to it so that's, yes. that's amazing what god did and um you just reminded me about something i read about the chosen so my family's been like recently watching The Chosen and something Dallas Jenkins said was, um, he's not supposed to multiply the food, just provide the loaves and the fish. So yeah, man. The one who does the multiplication and watching The Chosen, I shared this with Sarah the other week. Yeah. Amazing. And it's it amazing. Perspective to the Bible and like what life must have been like back then. Mm -hmm. and, it also gives us like a new idea to how Jesus must have been as a person. Yes. Cool. And um, I just wanted to ask about community. So we've been like in Praise Cafe. It's been such a blessing to me because mm -hmm. um, somehow similar to Kim, like I'm used to being the leader or the one who gives the encouragement, the one who 
takes charge of, of the life groups that I have or within our family, but being in Praise Cafe, it's receiving from different people from different parts of the world and like seeing how the body of Christ really is. Like we're all in different places. You've never seen each other in person yet, um, but we're there to build each other up and to glorify God through it all. So how important or how impactful has the community been for you this year, whether it's in Praise Cafe and ORU or in your church and your ministry, it definitely helped me throughout this year. I've learned a lot um, growing through community. So anyone could start. I have absolutely loved the Praise Online Cafe. It's been a, that's part of the surprising that's been there. That was not even on my radar. Like ORU wasn't on my radar at the beginning of the year. The Praise Online Cafe, that's kind of like the surprising blessing. And community is so important. And I, I have found that it's that um, accountability and connecting. And um, even just when you're not doing this and you're just walking and you're having, you're just going about your life and you think about everybody uh, in the cafe and, and what they're going through. And you think, you know what, they're going through their stuff and I can do this too. And it just kind of gives you that, that motivation. And because we're, we're, we're all the church, we're all a family and we're kind of doing this together and figuring life out and, and desiring to see, you know, God's will be done. And uh, it's kind of fun to connect with you know, the church family around the world. And I love that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, I always talk about the Praise Cafe. <laughs> um, I think that's what I needed um, for school. Mm -hmm. um, doing online school, um, it's, not, it's not the first, but um, it's for so long. This is like four years. And um, when I... When I registered, I was like, God, how am I going to manage when I can't communicate with anyone? Because you know me, I need that communication. I can't just be submitting work and not be able to speak to anyone. I'm going to die. And when I saw the email came about the Praise Cafe, I'm like, okay, this says praise. So it must do, be, do um, deal with something with God. So let me see what this is about, Praise Cafe, like Praise Cafe, maybe it's just a day of worship and just praise or something. So I was like, okay, let's try it out. And when I went there and I I'm, I, I think um, the first day I went on it, I think I met Julie and Professor and Christian. I'm not sure if you were there yet, Sarah, but I came on and I was like, I was there and they were like, where are you from? And I introduced myself. And I felt comfortable right away because what I like about the cafe is the diversity that you have people from different countries. We talk about different things, different food, different we, we experiences. And then not only that, even different languages, different traditions, some things I hear, I'm like, what? You know, so I am, I'm seeing the diversity of of our cultures coming together on that platform. And I it wasn't just just coming there, but you were able to get assistance with schoolwork because there were some things that I didn't know and I didn't understand because I haven't been in school for so long. And they were there to help. And I appreciated that. And Professor was handy. She was ready. She was ready to work. She was ready to encourage and even though I was just doing LGEN at the time, I didn't do an extra subject because I was like, I'm not sure what I'm, if I will manage, I was so scared. And then within week two, I was relaxed because of the cafe, because of the encouragement and everyone was there. And we, we, it was, it was so comfortable that we started sharing things. We started mimicking, we started laughing. We started sharing even private stuff with each other on the platform. And that's what we consider a family. So even though family community, so even though it's the school, that's our little community, that's our little family there in school that we know we can call on. I could email and say, okay, I'm having this situation. Can you pray about this for me? I'm having this situation. I need help. 
in completing this paper. So we were, we were not just a bunch of um, students not knowing what to do. There was somebody who, have done, who has done humanity before, who has done psychology before, something that can guide you and help you. I mean, Professor did the LJ, but she was able to read a paper. She was able to correct you or something, even though it was not her subject. So it's good with the resources and the people that we have met because even some persons, they're not coming on the cafe now, but I still communicate with them. I still talk to them. They're busy. We still encourage them, hoping that for the new semester that they will come on more. But that's a community that I need. I need it and I will do everything um, for next term to build um, the cafe because it's important, you know, with the new students coming on for orientation. I'm looking forward to that, that they not, not just come for orientation, but they come and join our community and stay there, build it, encourage others to come along because it helps. So sometimes we, we, we talk things, sometimes we laugh, sometimes we play games, and sometimes some people are not in the game mood because they have a lot of work to do or they don't want to talk as much as Kim, uh, as I talk sometimes, or maybe Sarah, or maybe Julie, or something, but sometimes you need to detox. You need that break. And when you are too uptight, you need to relax the muscles in your face at times. So you need to chill and relax. And sometimes people have problems at home. So even though we, we are all Christians are supposed to be Christians or born again believers, not all of us are at the same place. So we're there for support, we're there for encouragement and to push each other in your walk because you are helping me, Rochelle. I may be helping Sarah, Sarah helping Nola, Nola helping Christian. This is how we're supposed to do it because we're a part of the body of Christ. So I really love that community. And for church, the online community now that I've experienced with my church, it's different. Now, my pastor started something online that he has a program called Early Risers every morning we're on. And Mondays, Wednesdays, and Mondays and Wednesdays and Saturdays we're on. And it's not one church. It's people from all different churches coming on the one platform in the morning and at nighttime to be nourished. So he teaches the word. He doesn't care which congregation you're in. He doesn't care if you're in Canada because we have people on the platform from Canada. We have people from the UK. We have people from the US and people from Jamaica on the platform. And they come and they all feast. And let me tell you, when you go on the line, sometimes you want to speak and you can't speak because they're all having something to say. It's interactive. It's not like a Zoom meet when they're just preaching, 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 and you can't say anything. You can open like, pastor, I have a question. Oh, I don't agree with you, pastor. This is what I learned at my church. And then he has to explain to you why it's the correct way that what he's telling you is correct and what you have learned or expand on it. So he teaches us not to just go from Daniel 1, Daniel 2, Daniel 3, but link Daniel to Revelation, connect the scriptures, read them together and tie them in. And he does this every day, even on holidays. He's still open. The only day he didn't open the line was Christmas day, but he opens the line every month. They're actually on now, but they, they're open every Monday, every Wednesday, Monday to Friday. So I am seeing that community that I'm knowing so many other persons. Again, we don't go to the same church. We don't fellowship um, in the same sanctuary, but we are all on this Google Meet every day that I know how many kids you have, if you're married, if you're single, how are you feeling today? And it, it's two hours. And sometimes guys, it's on from six in the morning until, actually it starts 5 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning. And sometimes they're on till 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And it's all Bible, but it's like you're dissecting because you have Adventists, you have Church of God, you have Jehovah Witness. It's a mixture. So you're there going through the word. Some persons didn't know, understand the scripture or 
think about it, studied it different, and their eyes are now open. So I love those community because for me, even when I go out and I evangelize, I just take them on the platform and I'm like, pastor here. And I back off because once you're there, you're able to be nourished. And yeah, so that's how I feel about the community and what's open um, for 2021 with us being online. She'll come back in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Time is flying by fast. It does. A in lot. every sense of the word, both for the year and now. <laughs> like my sister and I are doing this 31 day challenge um, on Instagram. Uh, I've seen how a lot of people are doing these song challenges. So they share songs. And I was like, why not just share all the Christian songs that I know? Like people should know that there are good songs out there and you don't have to, like not to put other artists down or anything, but there are some songs that we don't really need to be listening to. And so we went on this 31 day challenge and we're, my sister yesterday was like, how are we at the end of the challenge already? Like we just started sharing songs at the beginning of the month and now we're about to end. And it's like, time went by so fast, but I'm glad that through it all, we can see how God is working. Do you have any, any last encouragement? Let's say last encouragement um, to yourself or to those around you as we end this year or something to start off next year. I know a lot of people need that encouragement, especially here with what's been going on. Um, we've been trying to build each other up. So I think sometimes it's important to remember to focus in on um, the faithfulness and goodness of God, because there's enough things that we can look at that are very negative and very down and very discouraging. But we, I, um, I love being challenged to see all the ways that God has been faithful and his promises and his, his goodness. And that's a, it's a, it's a good challenge because it's easy to start complaining. It's an easy start grumbling. It's easy to do all these different things because that's just sometimes the world we live in. Right. But in actuality, God is bigger and he's always working behind the scenes. And just as an encouragement going into 2022, be expectant to be absolutely expectant of God, that he's going to do that exceedingly abundantly more than all we can ask or imagine that's one of my favorite verses because that's who God is. I look back at my life and I go, well, I didn't expect that, but that was way better than I could have, you know, imagined it to be. So. Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, <laughs> listen, I tell everyone <laughs> that not just for 2021, but it's, it's a lifestyle. So I always encourage people just to remain steadfast, mm -hmm. remain rooted, know that who is your foundation? What, what foundation are you set up on? And once you know that Jesus is your foundation, you could rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, and continue an instant in prayer, Romans 12, 12. So if you're rejoicing in hope, you're, you have that faith, you know that, listen, he got me. He got me. He's leading. He's in charge. It doesn't ma matter if it seems rocky, the wind is blowing, you're wavering. He got you. Just continue to rejoice mm -hmm. and just be patient. Sometimes we're not too patient. We're, we're too pushy. We need to be patient. Be patient that we can hear when he speaks, that we could see what is it that he's teaching us. Because every experience, everything that we go through is for us to go to another level. The Lord is taking us to another level. He's taking us to a different, um, taking us to prepare us for the season in which he's taking us. And when you're continuing prayer is that you can't stop praying. So if you're a believer, there's no way you can stop praying because that, this is how we communicate with him. This is how we get our answers. Most of our answers come through prayer. So we have to continue to pray. And once we follow the word of God, follow these doctrine, follow these scriptures, and we trust God and just rest in him, then everything else you'll be encouraged. So it doesn't matter. I always tell people like 
yeah, the storm clouds, the ship is rocking. Just remember that he's not just with you, he's living in you. So there's a difference. You're not going through the situation alone. God is in you. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what is going on. He's in you. So you're just rejoicing. Just rejoice because he loves worship. He loves praises. So just mm -hmm. continue to just rejoice, you know, and just be patient because it doesn't matter what is going on. Everybody goes through tribulation. Some seems stronger. It Some seems longer. It's in the word. You don't even know when it's end or as it stops, it starts again. But it makes us stronger. It teaches us that we can help somebody else because our experiences is supposed to be a testimony to share to help others. So for, for me, I will continue to push the word, continue to be encouraged, continue to live a life that the light of Christ can be seen in me because it's all about um, souls we save. And for 2022, be encouraged, meaning going over, not just by myself, but with others to go to work. We're going to labor to bring in some more souls. So even on the cafe, we want souls because some people need to be more rooted, be more grounded, and everybody gifts are different. Everybody relationship with Christ is different. So we are there to help each other that we can all be the strong whole person empowered leader that you're teaching us to be so that's that's my encouragement yeah thank you it also reminded me of a talk i don't know if you um know dr caroline leaf she's okay yeah she's um very good in what she does when it comes to the brain studying and she had a an episode with priscilla shirer and they were talking about prayer and how it actually helps the physical body and our brains and and it, it reminded me and it gave me new information about how just thinking about God and how just talking to him in our minds because sometimes when we're outside we can't exactly pray as loud as we can as we can at home so they were saying just thinking about it or quietly talking shifts our brain or does something to our physical body and it reminded me that sometimes we limit God or we try to, mm -hmm. to put him in this idea or in this box or in this checklist that prayer is maybe for some people it's having to be in this room or in this place at this time to pray but really God is in us as you said and he's everywhere and as we enter 22 2022 I hope that those like for us and those who will listen or watch this will be encouraged to know that God is is near that's something the chosen has highlighted that he is near he is close the bible says he's close to the brokenhearted and he lives within us so he's not some far off god that only some people can touch and not everyone else but he's here for all of us jesus came for all of us and to those of us who believe and who have received him he lives within us and i'm excited for what 2022 will bring especially since i have friends from ORU um, who I know I, I will be keeping in touch with and who God has brought us together for a reason. So I'm excited for what he'll do um, in and through each of us. And thank you for being a part of this. I'm glad that we got to talk um, before the year would end and just catch up and share what's on our hearts. Like, it's really encouraging to hear from people. And like, when you guys speak, it, it just flows. You know, like, you know, it's not some rehearsed, thing or something forced upon you but it's from your heart that you want to see this and you want to know God more and just experience him so thank you but you know before you said that Rochelle I was <laughs> here and I'm like all I kept hearing this is not like a script you know like you gave us some questions before and we came on here and we're just it, it just flow and it shows yeah the heart the <laughs> zeal the compassion that we have the, the true meaning, you know, the faithfulness. So yes, I love it. I love, I love it. it. It's like the meat I and potatoes it. of life. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And and I pray that persons will be encouraged and save through just watching it. You know, it, it might be that encouragement that you're looking for for 2022 to know that just continue to push your way. You know, just push, just press on. Mm -hmm. You know, just press on.